Welcome back, everyone. Can't wait to get started with today's Friday review. So many updates to go over with you. Can't wait to bring you, hopefully, the weekend review with podcasts. I hope that you are up to date. If not, I'm going to share some details on those. I have two new product reviews and books that I want to talk about. Uh, It's from one specific doctor. I want to reach out to you, see if you've watched the documentary before or read his books. I'm interested to hear more about it. I've actually gotten a couple of uh, DMs for people asking me to review this. So I'm definitely going to, I'm definitely am going to, but also, you know, why has it been in the news a bit more? So I want to ask you as well, feel free to let me know in the comments if you've heard about this documentary uh, or the book, uh, which has been out for a number of years now. And we'll talk about that. And then I have two great great research studies. Like I always love to bring you new studies uh, and very pertinent ones as well. This one will be important. This is um, how to protect against UV exposure naturally. And also um, one on alcohol that you may or may not feel so good about. So we're going to go over that towards the end of the show. I always start with my updates. Just a couple updates here. Uh, many of you uh, did write in, which was which is nice to hear from you, about my specific goal about you know why I'm back in the gym to a greater degree, why I'm trying to work out a little bit uh, more hard. I, I, is that proper English? Well, we'll go with it for right now. Uh, and why I decided to add that extra smoothie in per day, that extra meal in per day. So um, honestly, I've been loving it. I really have. I mean, having a new goal instead of just going to the gym, instead of just working out to be healthy, to stay in shape, to keep my energy up, you know, to have a goal to hit something, to achieve something. I track everything in the notes now on my phone from going up, you know, weights each week. It's been a lot of fun. It really has. And I love doing the extra smoothie a day. I really do. So uh, that's been going absolutely fantastic. One thing I did want to share with you is that since I'm still doing the the fruit smoothie every day, I've actually added in and I I actually talked about this a bit last week, the coffee smoothie in the morning and it's stuck. For whatever reason, it is now a part of my morning routine. Certainly may go back to that purple crush smoothie, but I've been doing that for my um, pre-workout smoothie, um, so it, I don't I don't miss it. It's still there, uh, but I've been loving that one. Loving other recipes too. Again, we've got lots of smoothie recipes that are great. Sometimes they make one of my daughters the uh, dragon fruit uh, mango frozen banana. They love that one. I love that one myself as well. And we just add in the vanilla daily nutritional support. Uh, but the morning one, super simple, honestly. This is exactly what I do. I do seven to eight ounces, that's it, seven to eight ounces of cold brew coffee. Not a concentrate, just regular cold brew coffee. It's under 200 milligrams, mine's 180. And then I add 12 ounces, is it 12 ounces of water? No, it's, uh, what, is it nine ounces? Yes, because I go to 16 ounces of water, okay? So I put 16 to 20 ounces, typically 16 ounces total of fluid. So let's just do the math, 16 minus... Uh, let's say it's seven is what, nine? Okay, so I add nine ounces of water to it. And again, my blender tells me how much I'm adding. So it's super simple. So I don't overdo the caffeine. Uh, and just, I love the cold brew taste. So then I add in my water. I add in a half a cup of ice. So a half a cup of like a 16 ounce mason jar, okay? Dump the ice in. Then I add one frozen banana. So basically I buy, buy bananas. I let them ripen to where they have the brown spots in them. When you have brown spots on your bananas, not till they get rotten, but when they have brown spots in them, it actually increases natural killer cells that induce uh, basically a tumor necrosis factor that helps to kill cancer cells in your body. So is that the only thing that's going to help kill cancer cells? No, but why not? Let's do it. Right? So I get the uh, bananas, little brown spots. I create fours out of every banana. So I'm just going to let you in the, the, mind, the mind behind here is that every banana I break into four. So when you say, how do you know it's one banana? I break every banana into four in quarters. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, we don't, we're don't. we doing this every single day, right? So we, can, we get the same amount over the course of a week. So I put in my four pieces of banana, basically giant ice cubes, right? And then I put in two scoops of the chocolate daily nutritional support. So I've got a chocolate banana coffee smoothie, basically a mocha smoothie. It's delicious. It really is. And so that's what I've been doing in the morning. And I've been absolutely loving it. It makes about like 
you know, when it's all said and done, 24 to 30 ounces or so of fluid. So it's massively hydrating. Uh, I do, again, I do a, about an hour before that is my alkalizing vitamin C, uh, which I talked about on yesterday's show. Hopefully you tuned into that. That was a monster show on exactly when to take your supplements at what time of the day and the supplements that I use as well. So, uh, Again, been a lot of fun. Been enjoying my two smoothies a day. Uh, I, I'm on a weight gain routine. If you didn't, if you didn't check the previous shows, no weight gain. I'm on a muscle gaining routine. I'm not looking to gain a lot of weight or a lot of muscle, uh, but that's my program right now. My workouts have been harder than ever. I've lifted more weight than I ever have in about a decade. Meaning, like, not trying to break any world records, but more for me than I have. Uh, and I've absolutely been loving it. I really have, like, so much so that I want to do a weekend day as well. But <laughs> I'll keep you updated on that. So hopefully you're doing well. Hopefully you're getting into a new routine for the fall uh, yourself. All right, podcast recap for the week is up next. Honestly. I hope that you did, but I really loved this week of recording. I honestly did. On Monday, I went over a show that I'm very passionate about. I really am. The older I get, the older my daughters get, the more I want them to understand that comparison of anything in life with yourself and something else is the thief of joy, right? So we have to understand that to live a happy, healthy life, we cannot compare. So check out that show. That was episode 2061. Episode 2062 was the biggest intermittent fasting mistake that I see being made, uh, and it's a big one. On Wednesday's show was overcoming leptin resistance to burn more fat. This is super important. That was a science based show. So if you like the science of fat burning um, and also dealt with insulin resistance and even things like female hormone imbalances, low testosterone in men, you'll definitely want to check that out. And then let's see, uh, yesterday's show was the best time of the day to take supplements. That was a big show, a monster show that was one of those that I'll just keep referring back to, meaning like, hey, you have questions as to when to take which supplements? Here it is. There's the show. And it also teaches you, which is what I'm big on, so that if you get any supplement in the future, like any one of these or anything, uh, you'll know when to take it because I'm teaching you the, the fundamental rules of nutritional supplements, right? And, that, and then you'll be able to always uh, figure out where it goes, all right? So that is that. You can always find all podcasts at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts. All right, product review of, this week, of the week. I love reviewing gadgets and tech and blenders and you name it, like anything, right, that, that can make us healthier, make us happier. I, I love that. Well, I've gotten, I've gotten a couple direct messages. Now, it could just be coincidence. could be totally coincidence. But I have you seen this documentary? I haven't seen it yet. I want to watch it. I've heard good things. The trailer looked pretty good. But it's called um, Medicating Normal. So I haven't seen it yet, but I would love to hear if you have. So it's at medicatingnormal.com. You can watch the trailer. It might be free. I'm going to check it. I'm going to actually get on. I don't usually get on my computer during these podcasts, but I'm going to go to medicatingnormal.com. And I want to see how you actually get it. So watch the film. I'm going to click on that right there. And um, it debuted... July 1st, which is kind of nice, right? So it's fairly recent. And it looks like, believe it or not, it's going to be ending in just a week or two. So uh, let's see. But it's all online. Well, that's good. So you can watch it right online. All right. So head out over to medicatingnormal.com and you can watch it for $7. Seems like a pretty good deal. All right, so that is it. And what is it all about? Well, let's talk about that because this is what piqued my interest. And it has a lot of awards. Pretty, pretty cool to look at all the different awards that it's won. Uh, well, all right, good for them. So what it is, though, is we have so many people in the world being medicated for sometimes what are normal life difficulties, hardships, in feeling uncomfortable. And the way that, um, again, I'm so I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist. Dr. Alan Francis is. Dr. Alan Francis is a professor emeritus. He is a um, teaching professor. I know he is a medical doctor in psychology. And so what he's seen in his practice over the last 40 years is medicating any time a person is feeling uncomfortable, essentially, in any way in their life. 
And we know this with conventional medicine, with health-based issues. Like, oh, you know, you have a headache, you have this, you have that. Well, just, just take some migraine medication. Just take some whatever medication, right? And the first thing I always want to say is this. So there are people that absolutely do need medication for some type of emotional imbalance, okay? Whatever that may be. Now, the issue is, and they talk about this inside of the documentary, and, and the book review is going to be on his book as well. I'll share that with you in a minute because I know we have a lot of people who love to read um, that listen to the show, is that a lot of these drugs are not studied, nor are they meant to be used for years, never mind a lifetime at a time. And the devastation that it creates in people's lives and some of them even lead to increased risk of suicide. So I just want to bring more awareness to you uh, and into the world. So I do believe that some people absolutely do need pharmaceutical-based medications in order to prevent them from doing something risky for themselves or for their family or some other people around there. But at the same time, it's not the medication's job to get you better. It's simply to get you to a place where you can then work on the Diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance, supplements, and success mindset, right? The de-stress protocol that I talk about in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. That's what it's meant to get you to. So I think this film does a really good job talking about that. I'd love to hear if you've seen it or if you do watch it, let me know. And um, so Dr. Alan Francis was interviewed during this. And he also, then that led me to say, okay, has he written any books? And yes, he has. He's actually written multiple books. Uh, with one of them called Saving Normal. Do I have his? Let me see if I have his uh, information here. I don't, but you know what? He has two books. I'll link up his second one as well. The first one that I know of is called Saving Normal. And it's called uh, Saving Normal. Oh, and the second one is Essentials of Psycho uh, Psychiatric Diagnosis. And that's why you don't, that's more of a medical based book. So Saving Normal is basically helping people to understand their psychiatric diagnosis and to understand that they can get better without medication as well. And that the underlying root cause was not a lack of medication, but an actual imbalance in their body. And it gets really great reviews. It's four and a half stars, which, you know, for a book on Amazon where you know, a lot of people love to live, ne leave negative reviews for anything. Um, that's pretty great. So four and a half stars, 349 reviews. So, you know, good for him. Uh, that came out in uh, 2014, Dr. Alan Francis called saving normal. So what I'm going to do is link up the documentary for you. And I will also link up the exact book. Uh, plus I'll also link up more of the medical based text that, um, that's not, not medical. So anyone's able to read it that other people might like to go deeper as well, especially if you're dealing with a emotional uh, or psychiatric based uh, imbalance. I don't like to say disorder, but imbalance. And I think that'd be really helpful. So definitely check those out. And again, I'm going to be checking them out as well. Let me know what you thought. I like to just sometimes bring it to you at the same time. I'm going to be watching it as well. All right. First research study for you today. This one comes from Dr. Lara Camillo. Uh, Camillo. She's a PhD and Paola uh, Savoia who is a MD and PhD, and this is out of Italy. Sounds like Italian names. Um, and they were leading a presentation at the European Academy of Dermatology. So pretty interesting, right? So when I read over this study, I said, okay, this is something that's fairly easy to be able to get the benefits from. And that was because it's a simple vitamin B3. But vitamin B3 comes in multiple forms. And a lot of people are afraid of taking vitamin B3. They've heard of niacin before. And they've heard of this niacin flush, right? They've heard of that before. But what they don't know is they can get vitamin B3 and they can get a non-flush uh, niacin that allows them to get the benefits of B3 without the flushing of the, of the skin. And there are multiple names for that, but the flush-free version, instead of just straight niacin, is nicotinic acid as well as inositol hexaniacinate, okay? So nicotinic acid as well as inositol hexaniacinate, and those are the two uh, flush-free versions that alleviate that. But by taking vitamin B3, uh, they found that those people were less sensitive to sunlight, as well as 
uh, DNA misformation, so deformation, which then leads to skin-based cancer. More research is definitely needed, but there's just so many people out there that are obviously worried about skin cancer that may have more fair skin, that are more susceptible to the sunlight. And there's also a lot of people out there who just still don't believe in vitamins, right? They still don't believe in like vitamins and minerals, uh, even though uh, this is what the human body uses, processes. And so uh, I just wanna, I just wanted to bring that to you and share that with you. I will link up the study here today at stephencabral.com forward slash 2065. So take your vitamin B3, take your niacin. And the last one, uh, study that I'd like to bring you today is on alcohol. I've got so many studies on my desk right now, literally. This one is, and again, you've heard me say this before, and I don't want to get into confirmation bias at all, because I actually look for studies that show that alcohol is good for you. <laughs> I really do. Uh, those are more difficult to come by because they are definitely swayed in their own direction and often paid for by uh, alcohol-based companies. But uh, I am not one to say that you can't drink alcohol. People have been drinking alcohol for as long as they were able to milk, make alcohol. And in Ayurveda, they also drank some alcohol as well. Now, they infused it with herbs. I'll be talking about that in a couple of weeks too with buckwheat-infused uh, liquor, which is high in quercetin, but we'll save that for another show. Um, and Ayurveda also infused it with, uh, when I was in India and I was studying with Dr. Moriarty in the Himalayas, is, uh, he gave me some ashwagandha wine. Uh, we just, again, we had like, I would say three ounces of it uh, and it was absolutely delicious. It was fantastic and infused with uh, ashwagandha as well as the deepest, darkest, like red skin grapes that you could see. So it was, it was pretty, pretty amazing. Uh, but what I want to, I want to share with you is this. Okay. Because I've said this over and over, and again, I have not deleted a single podcast on the Cabral concept. So you can go back six years, all my, my, words are there. And I only give you information that not only is factual, but passes the common sense barrier as well. Okay. So I've always said, and and again, the research has proved it out two to three drinks a week. That's it. It's not the one drink a day. And they got to, and I've I've spoken about this before too, and I don't want to take too much of your time up today, but when that, when the new food pyramid was being created, they got together a group of, it was a, it was over a dozen doctors and they asked the FDA, the food pyramid, to remove alcohol as something that you should have on a daily basis or something that's even good for you. And they refused to do it. And that, of course, is lobbying at its best, right? That's the power of lobbying. So we have to be careful with that because the studies show two to three drinks a week. That's what seems acceptable for the largest amount of people. Some people can definitely do a drink a day. There's no doubt about that. But that doesn't mean, but we don't know if it's you. Right, that's that's the big question mark. But two to three drinks a week seems to be okay. Ideally, no more than one to two days a week. Right, so one drink on a Wednesday, one drink maybe on a Saturday. Right, or ideally just one day a week for two drinks maximum. That would be probably the best way to do it. Then you give your liver and your body plenty of time to detox over the next two days from all that ethanol, from all the alcohol. Okay, but let's, let's not even go into theory. Let me share with you the research. This is a new research study. This one is out of Germany. Okay, it's published in the European Heart Journal, and it's based on cardiovascular risk. So even moderate alcohol consumption is linked to heart trouble. Research has shown that moderate drinkers enjoy a slightly reduced risk of heart failure compared with, with uh, non-drinkers. That's the two to three drinks a week. Uh, but new research suggests that risk for atrial fibrillation an irregular, which is an irregular heartbeat that increases the risk for stroke, heart failure, and other heart-related complications is a different story. In a 14-year study of nearly 108,000 people, those who averaged one drink per day had a 16% higher risk of developing atrial fibrillation than their teetotaling peers. The mechanism whereby moderate alcohol consumption increases atrial fibrillation is still unknown. But here's the thing. What we do know is it does cause the liver to have to work harder. It reduces glutathione. It uses up more antioxidants. It creates more oxidative stress, more inflammation, more free radical damage, and a narrowing of the arteries. So when they say, when they say it's unknown, we know what it does They just don't know the specific silver bullet they're looking for as to what it is. So again, even just one drink per day increases your risk for stroke 
and essentially heart failure by 16%. What I recommend is one day a week, maximum two drinks. But again, it's your life. And you might say, I do everything else well, and I want to have a drink um, three nights a week. I'm okay with that. Again, this is your life. I want you to enjoy it, but I just want you to know both sides to it. That's all. So hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, for all of the show notes, you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 2065. I'll link up the two studies. I'll link up the product review, the book review, and anything else that we can find here for you. Thank you so much. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be back tomorrow answering our community's questions. Take care, everyone.